All right, Luke, tell me about Starlink. An Arizona Reddit user has said that his Starlink dish overheated and shut off once it reached a maximum temperature of 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 50 degrees Celsius. The area reported 112 degrees at the time with a high of 119. It returns to operation at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually kind of nice. I just assumed it was going to like die. Um, but it seems like if you do cool it down, it does start to work again. Uh, the Arizona beta tester sprayed his dish with a sprinkler and it kicked back on <laughs> upon reaching the re reduced temperature. Um, which I guess, I mean, you put them outside. So yeah, spraying with water is probably fine, but that's still something that I feel like I would probably be reluctant to do. Um, however, other users commenting on the Reddit thread mentioned they're experiencing similar temperatures and not experiencing the overheating and shutting down. So it could just be a couple isolated incidents. Yeah. Uh, Tesla also, has... I sorry? mean, it could even be as simple as just like the angle of the dish and the sun hitting it. Like if it's... Because it could be really concentrated on one point. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Um, Tesla has told a third user whose dish failed at 111 degrees Fahrenheit that it was a software issue and they're working to resolve it, which surprised me when I first read this. Sounds to me like um, the software issue is that they just have a, a, shut, a safety hot. shut off and they're, they're just going to disable it. <laughs> yeah, which is probably why the thing doesn't like break, right? Um, which seems possible as they're failing below the rated temperature of 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's probably, yeah, probably a fail safe triggering a little bit early. Yeah. Uh, the low point at which the units stop working is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius, if you were interested. Uh, another somewhat extreme weather case, and with the earth getting warmer, this might not be important soon enough. It's also getting more extreme, though. Some places are getting quite cold at times. Uh, areas closer to the North and South Pole aren't even supported by Starlink yet, um, like all of Antarctica and most of the Arctic Circle. So the coldness portion is probably uh, not going to be noticed quite as much. Um, but 50 degrees Celsius is like, I mean, that's pretty crazy, but that does that does happen quite often in a lot of places. And having your, your whole internet go down because it gets hot outside, uh, pretty unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sucks. You know what's funny is uh, my mom... You should do a water-cooled Starlink satellite dish. Uh, I almost got an opportunity. My mom was doing a... Uh, or is... She's working on an off-grid place, right? So they're going to do the okay. whole, like, compost toilet or whatever. It's like this super new age, like, like sure. toilet system. Um, they're doing off-grid power. And obviously, one of the things they want to figure out is... Um, one of the things they want to figure out is internet, right? And so she asked me, okay, hey, you talked to me before about using um, like a, a, a ubiquity air fiber link or something like that across the water. I'm like, yeah, I did talk to you about that before. Uh, we had actually looked into buying the property right next to them. And that was what I was looking into for myself. And we ultimately figured out how much a recreational property actually costs. And we were like... <laughs> So by this math, <laughs> assuming we even had this much money, we could stay at an Airbnb for two months out of every year for 50 years and not even get close or something like that. I, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite that ridiculous, but it was maybe it was like a month a year or something. It doesn't matter. The point is we wouldn't have to do any of the laundry for our towels. We wouldn't have to, you know, cart food across the water to this off-grid place when we wanted to go there yeah, we were like yeah. this this doesn't actually recreational property at least owning one unless you're going to airbnb it it just didn't make any sense for us it's certainly well, like planning to Vancouver. retire there or something sure if you're gonna live there it's not a recreational property anymore though is it so for the amount well, no of... if you're planning to retire there because right. you could you could airbnb sure. it in the short term sure yeah yeah the point is, I was trying to help her figure out internet for it, and I had already looked into it. So there's a marina on the other side of the water where you can lease a space on their... They have this tower, and you can put your dish on it, and then you can run your cables. They have a nice waterproof entry into this hut that you put your uh, your modem in, and then you can you can beam your internet across the water that way. So she was asking me. She's... she's I'm, yeah, I'm reasonably, I'm reasonably proud of her sometimes. She was asking me, she's like, oh, I heard Elon Musk invented some kind of satellite internet. Should I do that thing you were talking about before or should I get myself one of those? And what I basically said to her was, 
If you want the idiot proof solution that you can recommend to your other buddies on the island who I am not going to be willing to go and set it up for them, um, yeah. get Starlink. But if you want the better solution that is going to be more reliable from our experience with Starlink, it's beta. And SpaceX is completely honest about it. They, it's in beta and it's not perfect. And this is exactly the kind of bug wrinkling out that needs to happen during a beta test. And I'm glad they're getting it sorted out. Um, and I'm not, sur I'm not surprised. And I, I'm sure they're going to get it sorted. It's just a matter of like... Normally, when you set the the operating temperatures for a product, it would be with pretty large tolerances on either side. Like, I'm yeah. sure if you have a yeah. cell phone, it probably says the operating temperature minimum is like zero degrees or minus 10 degrees or something along those lines. And yet, somehow here in Canada, we use iPhones. It's wild. It doesn't make any sense. It should be the battery imagine, life. Imagine using phones, dude. I, I can't. I actually want to look it up now. iPhone operating temperature. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Between 32 and 95 Fahrenheit. What does that even mean? Ah, what is Fahrenheit? That's uh, yes. zero. Zero and 35 Celsius. So yeah. by the logic of adhering to the, you know, acceptable operating temperature, you basically can't live in Calgary or Arizona um, because... When I live streamed that whole snowboarding thing, that just, that, I just imagined all that. That yeah. wouldn't have worked at all. You broke Apple's mind. So to be clear, yeah. I'm not saying that it is ideal for these products to be used under those conditions. Um, I think Apple is very correct to say that if you use it at a lower temperature, you might not have an optimal experience. And in fact, if it if you are under in a in a very hot environment, you can easily have it trigger overheating warnings. If you, for example, leave it somewhere where the sun is coming right down on the turned off black screen and heats up the whole thing, you'd be amazed how much of the cooling of your phone is done through the screen. It's the largest heat dissipating surface on your phone. I, I the first time I opened up uh, our um, I fired up a thermal camera to look at a phone. I was I was just blown away by I mean obviously you know yeah the heat has to come out somewhere but I just never really thought about it I always thought because I'd, I'd never really thought about it I always just thought oh yeah Back. that's that's why we have the metal frame around the outside it's like for yeah. better he could I never thought about the heat conductivity of glass and it might be lower than metal for sure it's lower than metal but it's so much more surface area compared to that skinny frame around your phone especially now that phones are basically 50 percent screen and 50 percent uh, more different glass on the back. Um, the point is, I'm sure that they had some buffer in their in their rated temperatures, and I'm sure they can just kind of bump the buffer a little bit, and it'll be okay. Or who knows? Maybe it won't. Maybe they'll just be playing fast and loose, you know, Tesla style, and it'll all be, you know, hopefully good.